Greetings, I'm Don Bailey from Suburban Tool. I never know whether I should do the greeting of the day, good morning, good afternoon, whatever, but anyway, I think greeting's a good way to start it off. That's the way they used to, uh, that's a message you used to get from the United States government when they were going to draft you, greetings, because I was there. Anyway, my name is Don Bailey, I'm from Suburban Tool. Uh, I want to talk to you today about a grinding wheel for the surface grinder. There's lots of grinding wheels, but specifically for the surface grinder. And I want to talk about how to prepare for it. That is the type of wheel that you need to select, not necessarily why, we're not going to get into that, but uh, here are the important issues that we're going to talk about. We need safety glasses, got them. A diamond to dress a wheel. We need a grinding wheel, obviously. A wheel puller, we'll talk about why we need the puller. A wheel adapter, a wheel wrench, balancing arbor, pencil, important, drill press with a carbide drill, and the stone, the stone to chuck to get the bugs off of it, or burrs as we call them. So with that, I want to talk to you also about the grinding wheel itself. Next on the grinding wheel itself, there's a series of numbers, and I want to tell you what those numbers mean. There's some on there that are related strictly to the manufacturer, and uh, they're not that important for us grinder hands. 48 is a manufacturer's number that sometimes you'll see on there, sometimes you won't. In this case, it's not even on the wheel. A stands for the type of abrasive that they're using, which in this case is a Lundum. 60 is the grit size, big, small, you know, that type, 120, 240, etc. Two, again, is another manufacturer's symbol. J is the degree of hardness of the wheel. That's the bonding material that holds all the grit together. Six is the structure. That means whether it's open or closed, dense wheel, open wheel. And V is the bond type. In this case, it happens to be vitrified. That's what the V stands for. 23 is another manufacturer symbol. And Glenn, I don't know if you can see this, but if you get a close up on that, you'll notice that this wheel doesn't have hardly any of those numbers on there. What it does have, though, is inch and a quarter, and that means the arbor size. That's what that's about. This particular wheel has a recess on the back side, and sometimes you need that when you're trying to work up against the face of, say, an angle plate, because otherwise the hub gets in the way. Okay, when you're grinding, surface grinding that is, and you're working in tens of thousands, or in some cases millions, it's important that you understand what the micro world is all about. And you need to shrink the kids, if you will, and get down to that level so you can really understand it. Everything affects grinding, whether it's heat, whether it's a burr, a piece of dust. All those things are critical when you're trying to hold a couple of tents. For example, this is a blow up of a grinding wheel at about 200 times. Gives you an idea about what all these little things are inside here that are doing the cutting. This is an abrasive, and these are stones, and they're actually going to make a chip as they grind. So it's important that you understand the fundamentals of a grinding wheel. Here's what the material looks like that you're removing when you're grinding. This is magnified 200 times as well, so when you look at it closely, it's really a form of steel wool. And most people think it's dust, not what it is, folks. Like I said, get down to that micro level. You have to think in the micro world. That's the best way, that's the best advice I can give you if you want to give, give yourself the opportunity to grind good parts at, at high quality product. We put a little burr on the chuck, deliberately, and we magnified it 200 times. Now that's what it looks like, and all I did was touch it. I didn't use a hammer or anything, I just barely touched it, and you can see what it did to it. It raised the material. After we stoned it, that's what it looked like. Now the hole is still there, but we removed the high spot. Very important that you do that. That's why we keep a stone near the surface grinder, and we use it at all times on the chuck. It's a good idea to check the wheel uh, for its integrity. Uh, doubtful that a manufacturer would send it out if it weren't proper, but anyway, you hear the ringing, indication that there's no cracks in the wheel. 
One of the things that you don't want to do is hammer on the spindle. So we need to tighten the wheel. How do we tighten the wheel on there without hammering on it? That's a little trick I learned a lot of years ago, back when I was a tool maker. Put the wrench on, put it up against the chuck, grab the wheel, and tighten the wheel. That secures it. You don't need a hammer. Don't even think about a hammer. All right, now that we've mounted our wheel, we're going to take a dress of the wheel first. Why are we going to do that? Because the wheel is, when it comes from the manufacturer, it's not precisionally dressed. So we're going to take a couple of cuts off the wheel to make sure that it is. After that, we're going to balance the wheel. So we'll show you how to do that as well. Ready? All right, we talked about the safety glasses. Got to put them on. Wheel puller, we talked about that. I'm going to show you how we're going to use that in a bit. Wheel wrench. Stone. We're going to dress the wheel now, and then we're going to remove the wheel, balance it, and put it back on. We'll show you how to do that and why we're going to do it. So first thing we're going to do is take a dress. I like to make sure that we find the center line. And you can just guess at it. It doesn't have to be exact. One of the things that I do I merely bring, put my hand near the back side of the wheel, bring it down until I can feel the abrasive coming off the wheel. Got it right there. Now I know that I'm touching the wheel. I can take a dress off of it. A couple more thousandths. When you're dressing the wheel, if it's out around, you can hear it chatter. So when it's when you don't hear the chatter any longer, you know that you've finally dressed the wheel to where it's perfectly round. And I could hear it, you probably can't hear it because of the background noise, but I can hear it just fine, so I know we're good. So we're going to stop with that. Now that we've dressed it, we're going to take the wheel off and we're going to balance it. All right, so we're going to remove the nut, we're going to keep the arbor and the wheel intact. It's a left-hand thread. This is where the wheel, uh, wheel puller comes into play. That's all it takes. Now we remove the wheel and the hub. Okay, so we put our wheel on the arbor, on the balancing arbor, and we're looking for a low spot or a heavy spot. And we're gonna mark it with our pencil. You can see that it's gonna be right about there. So we're gonna take it from here, and we're gonna take it over to the drill press and we're going to drill a few holes into it so it does not affect the integrity of the grinding wheel of course. We've removed some of the abrasive from the uh, grinding wheel and now we're going to put it on the back on the balancing arbor or on the correction on the balancing machine. Clean off the rollers. Voila, as you can see, the wheel is pretty well balanced. It stops just about anywhere. So we know we've done a good job of balancing. Now we did remove some material, as you can see right in here. There's always a danger of breaching the integrity of the wheel. We don't believe we did that because we didn't go far enough, we didn't go deep enough to do that. It's an insignificant amount. However, it's important to balance the wheel. It, it eliminates the vibration which puts a chatter in a part. It's also much better on the bearings of the spindle. Keep in mind, we're talking about a hand crank surface grinder. There are other grinders, particularly the larger ones that have weights inside the center that you can move around. 
there's really no way to balance a wheel other than to remove the material as we've done. Uh, and, we've, and I've done this for years. I mean, I've been a tool maker back in the 50s. My father was a tool maker. It's just what we did. We've never, ever had a problem with it. So it's the way we do it anyway. We think it's a good way. And frankly, it's worked for so many years. All of our guys do it. We have over 50 grinder hands back there. So this is what we do. All right, we've taken the arbor off and we're gonna remount the wheel. Always clean the taper on the wheel hub and the taper on the spindle. Gently install it. Taking the nut, remember it's a left-hand thread. Snug it up. Okay, we put our wheel back on the surface grinder. Now we're going to take our diamond. We're going to take another dress off the wheel. And again, we want to find the center line. Which is about there. Contact. Okay, you're ready to grind. So that's how we uh, balance the grinding wheel. That's how we install it. That's why we how we do not hammer on the spindle and so forth. Uh, and our next video, by the way, is going to be on how to grind a surface grinding chuck. That is the toughest thing to do because it takes you to the maximum capacity of the chuck in the length and in the depth. So there's a few tricks to doing that, and we're going to show you those tricks. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for watching.